Here is one reason why it matters that we can calculate absolute entropies. We can use them to quickly calculate if reactions are spontaneous. Similar to the standard molar enthalpy, we can define standard molar entropies, which represent the total entropy at one bar. These are absolute entropies typically reported at 298 Kelvin. These values can be used in the same way as the standard molar enthalpy in order to find the change in entropy of a reaction, which is the weighted sum of the standard molar entropies of the products minus the weighted sum of the standard molar entropies of the reactants. Finding the change in the standard total entropy of the reaction indicates if the reaction is spontaneous. So let's now do an example using standard molar entropies to calculate if a reaction is spontaneous. So in this case, what we're looking at is the combustion of hydrogen gas at 298 degrees Kelvin. And this, the rebalanced chemical reaction is simply two hydrogen gas molecules plus one oxygen gas molecules reacts and combust to form two liquid water molecules. And so the way we're going to break down this problem is into three parts. The first is what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the change in the standard entropy of the system. We're then going to calculate the change in the standard entropy of the surroundings. And then what we'll then find out is the total entropy change. And the total entropy change will simply be the summation of the change in entropy of the system and the change of entropy of the surroundings. So let's now find the first part to this problem, which is find the delta or the change in entropy of the system. And so to find the change in entropy of the system, then we're going to use the standard molar entropies. And that is equal to the weighted sum of the standard molar entropies of the products minus the weighted sum of the standard molar entropies of the reactants. And so here for the products, I have two times um, or two water liquid water molecules. So the standard molar entropy is two times 69.91. And from that, I'm going to subtract off this weighted sum of the reactants, and so I have 2 times um, 130.684 plus 1 times 205.138. So the hint very easily gives us all the standard molar entropies that we need for the H2, the O2, and the H2O. But what you'll notice is that for the H2 and the O2, there's actually a standard molar entropy. And remember, this is because we're measuring the uncertainties in terms of the number of microstates that each of these gases can inhabit at room temperature at 298 Kelvin. And so I'm only making note of this because this is in contrast to the standard enthalpy of formation, which is something that we talked about a couple of lectures ago, where the H2 and the O2 well, this was their reference state, and so we defined the standard enthalpy of formation to be zero for these two molecules. Whereas now, in this case, when we're talking about standard molar entropies, well, the zero for these molecules is at zero degrees Kelvin. Whereas now, because we're looking at 298 Kelvin, even though it's, they're in their reference states, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, they still have a standard molar entropy because it gained a bunch of entropy as we summed from 0 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin. So moving forward with this calculation, we have 139.82. And from that, I'm going to subtract off 466.506. And what I end up in the end is minus 326.7 joules per Kelvin mole. And so now the next thing that you may notice is that I have a minus sign out front, which means that my entropy in this case went down. But that should probably be a little bit surprising because we would expect that for a combustion reaction, where we're basically burning hydrogen and oxygen to form water, we should expect entropy to increase because it's spontaneous. Or we would expect this reaction to be spontaneous. And so the one thing we have to keep in mind is that when we talk about the second law where we expect entropy to go up, it's for isolated systems. And in this case, our system isn't isolated. And that's why we also need to calculate the surroundings, because the system and the surroundings then produce this isolated system where, again, we would expect entropy to go up, which then we can then use to determine spontaneity. And that's why we're going to calculate delta S total where we sum the system and the surroundings together. And so it's okay that this number is negative for the system, 
because what that means is that hopefully then the amount of entropy or the change in entropy of the surroundings is going to be a positive number and it's going to be much bigger than 326.7 joules per kelvin per mole so that the total entropy change ends up being a positive number thereby confirming to ourselves our what our intuition tells us that this reaction should be spontaneous so then let's calculate the change in entropy of the surroundings Well, in this case, we're going to use the fact that the heat then that was given off by the system is then the heat that's inputted into the surroundings. And because we're at constant pressure, because this reaction is going to be done in, in the open air, then we can then use, say that heat is actually equal to the enthalpy. And so we can actually then use, well, the standard enthalpy change for the reaction to calculate the, the change in entropy of the surroundings. And so what we would then write is, the standard change in enthalpy for the reaction is equal to the weighted sum of the products minus the weighted sum of the standard enthalpies of the reactants. And so for the products, we have 2 times minus 285.8 times 10 to the 3 because this number was given in kilojoules, and so I multiply it by times 10 to the 3 to write it into joules. And then from this, I'm going to subtract off 2 times 0 plus 0. And so here it is with this point that I was making earlier where we have standard molar entropies of these reference states, but we don't have standard molar enthalpies of these reference states. The standard molar enthalpies of these reference states are 0. And so in this case, then what we have is our change in enthalpy for the reaction is just equal to this 2 times minus 285.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Well, that's then minus 5.716 times 10 to the 5 joules per mole. And so it's this number then I stick back into my change in entropy of the surroundings. Well, I have a minus sign and then I have minus 5.716 times 10 to the 5. And with that, I'm going to divide by the temperature. In this case, it's 298. And so then that gives me a change in entropy of the surroundings of 1.918 times 10 to the 3 joules per Kelvin mole. All that's left to do now is just to sum up these two numbers so that we can then find the total entropy change. And so from that we're going to have the system which is minus 326.7 and to that I'm going to add 1.918 times 10 to the 3 and it's good that I wrote this in joules per mole for the system for the yeah for the system as well as joules per kelvin per mole for the surroundings and so both these units are exactly the same. And so then I what I get for my entropy change is 1591 joules per kelvin mole. And in this case now we can see that the entropy in this case went up, which is again what we would expect for a combustion reaction because we would expect it to be spontaneous. And so therefore our intuition has been confirmed with what we would expect out of this type of reaction in terms of calculating the entropy change for the, the, for the total being the system and the surroundings. Here is a summary of this lecture. Entropy is defined as the Boltzmann's constant times the natural logarithm of the number of microstates in a given macrostate. A spontaneous process is a process that has a tendency to occur without work needing to be done. This is quantified by entropy since systems tend to evolve to macrostates with more microstates. This idea is encapsulated by the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the entropy of an isolated system tends to increase. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropies of all perfectly crystalline substances are the same at T is equal to zero Kelvin. And these two laws of thermodynamics can be used to quantify if a process is spontaneous by calculating the difference in the total entropies of a given temperature of the initial and final states. If the change in the total entropy is positive, then the process is spontaneous.